Today, we're making this. A sword. But not just any sword, a sword you can make with minimal tools. Constructed out of wood, PVC, and a little bit of paracord. Interested? Here we go! The goal of this build, as in most of my builds, is try to use the minimum amount of tools so that people can replicate this. So what I have here is a select pine board. It's a one by two. It used to be six feet long. Now it's right around 37 inches. You could use 36 inches. You could use less than that. For this sword or cutlass, the blade is typically anywhere from 30 to 32 inches long. So I happen to have a 32 inch long blade and handle, you know, comfortable for your hand. So that's around five inches for me. If you made this a little shorter and kept the handle at five inches, I think you're good. Now, this is a square handle and I didn't like that. So I went in here and I've actually marked where I'm going to shave back the corners. And then you can see the back here. I've also labeled back and front. So here I just took a, a metal ruler like this used a couple clamps, put it down on the table, made some marks in slightly here on the one inch side, which really isn't one inch. <laughs> That's the way it goes with American lumber. And that is my back and that is my goal for planing down. I am going to use a plane and, a, and possibly a sander. And then on the front, I've made similar lines, one at the center of this face of the board and then one on either side about a couple of millimeters or about a quarter inch and that's what I'm going to taper it down to from the back here so that's going to slope if you can imagine you'll see when we get down to the cutting part since it's a wooden blade not a steel blade it's got to have some heft to it if you try to thin it out much as a metal blade you're gonna have problems it's just not gonna last and then you can see that I've come up with an edge here. I use a lot of these for making circles and so I came in here and made a circle and then I've marked the area that I'm going to cut off. I'm going to cut that off with a coping saw. I guess I could come in here with a coping saw but what I'm going to do is try to shave it down. Use the shaver first and then a sander. I'm using an old protein powder container. You could use anything that has a thicker plastic on it. For this detail and then I'm using a 1.5 inch, what do you call it? Doll head. 1.5 inch doll head. You can get this at almost any craft store. So we're going to have that guy on there like this. The handle. This is going to come around like that. I'm probably going to make that out of PVC pipe. I'll show you later, but this is just kind of my mock up. You could go along with this, it probably would work fine. And then I'll show you some options on how we're going to finish it. Whether it's tape or paint, I'm really not sure at this point. I guess we'll figure that out together. Marking these things ahead of time, it's tedious, but very important to the success of the build. You can see also that I've come over here and marked the edges. I used a just a piece of pipe here to try to get a sense of what the, I wanted the handle to be. And then I followed those lines into these hashed areas that I'm going to shave back. And I've also marked the center of that so I can put a screw in both the dowel head and here and we're going to mat that together and then glue it and screw it so that it's right in place and will stay there for a long time. And it's also going to help put this guy in place and keep him in place like that. At least that's my vision. There's a couple things I wanted to show you. I did the handle first and then I, I used the hand belt sander and actually ground down here to the lines on either side as an end state. This is the probably the most important transition because you're going to bring the guard in here and then that gives you a target for the plane. I guess you could sand this whole blade but the plane really takes away a lot of the material so that it's the most efficient approach. For the end I found the center hole, pre-drilled it for a two and three quarter inch long screw. Drilled the hole through to the end of the dowel head, beveled it out, pre-drilled it so that it will go in. That way when I put the guard in, 
This will help keep the guard in place. Taking a one and three quarter inch segment off of a four inch schedule 20 sewer pipe. This is cheaper than the schedule 40, it's thinner. And I'm going to heat it up, shape it for the guard. Using the heat gun on high, and it doesn't take much time, I shaped this out and I had something about the size that I want that's five inch and, and I just kind of put it over here. I like this little arch here. So I was able to get a little bit of that, especially on the top here, which is where I want it. And the curve by just pushing down, it's gonna come up like that on the other side and tie into the blade on top. And then down here is where it's gonna tie up in the blade on the bottom. So I <coughs> made this association because that's right the same size as that. This is where the cutoff is, so I'm going to use a Dremel cutter and just cut up here to kind of shape it down to this shape on the bottom from the top. I'm pretty happy with the heat gun and how that made that curve. So as I was heating it and I wanted to flatten out this area here at the bottom and at the top, I would just heat it up, put it in here and then just sandwich it between these two pieces of metal like that. Steel plates, you can get this in any big box, Home Depot, Lowe's. It's what they put covers on, on electrical outlets. Just pressed it that way, and it came over here and did the th same thing and pressed it over there and used a pair of pliers just to hold that in place until it gave me a nice little curve. For the top where the blade's gonna slide through, this way, I just made a series of holes with a small drill bit. You can see it on the other side, and then I'm gonna use that as a guide for the Dremel tool. If you didn't have a Dremel tool, you could do the same thing with the drill, just get really close, 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 and then bigger hole here and just file them all out. But since I have the Dremel tool, I'm just gonna do most of the heavy cutting with this, now that I have the pattern with the holes. I've gone back and forth on whether or not I was gonna tape or paint. I did some test runs on this metallic paint. It's not too shiny. It's kind of got a dull look to it, almost like it's worn. So I painted the knob with that. I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. And I just took an old container and wanted to see how well it would paint up on the PVC. And I'm pretty confident that it's going to paint up just like it is here. I've sanded this all down. You can see I've completed the section here that goes over the blade. I've got this all measured out in a hole in that to mate up with this. And I've taped off the areas on top and the bottom in here <laughs> where I'm going to glue it in place to the wood. Now on the blade itself, sanded that down with a sanding sponge, finished that all off. So it's nice and ready to go. And I've taped off the top here, which is going to glue to this top here place. And then I used a black marker. You could also use paint because I'm going to wrap this handle with paracord. I sanded that down, smoothed that down because that's going to be the interface for the bottom here. And now it's just a matter of painting it up. For the blade, I'm going to use this Rust-Oleum Metallic. This is unfunded. Just happened to like these were stolen products. You could use any other silver metallic paint that you want to get the same results. Put eyes in the project with some coat hanger, just hang it off a tree to dry. Same thing here. I have this little extension area. So we'll paint up the sword first, then we'll paint up the guard, let it dry, and then we'll be ready for a final assembly. With rattle can paint, the key is to do many light coatings. You want to be at least 10 inches away and just be patient with it. Otherwise, if you put too much on at one time, it's going to glom up, it's going to flow, and you're going to be miserable because you're going to have to scrape it off like I did on this side. This side, on the other hand, has been really good. Now, I know people put on a primer coat and usually with silver paint they put on black. I didn't do a primer coat 
in hindsight. I'm going to try it next time because I think it's going to help out immensely. There's two or three layers on now. You can see I still have some painting to do. But once again, light sprays because if not, you get like a little run right there that I'm going to have to contend with. And doing this outside is preferable. It's so much easier. It's healthier for you too. And always wear a mask, glasses, and gloves to protect your skin. So I'm taking a little dab of rapid fuse and I'm putting it in the hole I drilled. Then I'm going to put the paracord in. And that will just keep it in place. I'm going to go in the opposite direction of the hole and just run the paracord along the line like this until I get right to that hole. And then every so often I'm going to glue it in place. You want it to be tight. And this will all be concealed by the guard. Okay, now you can turn around like this and just wrap it, hold it, pause. Make sure you don't over wrap there. Tighten it up, put it down. So rapid fuse, it takes about 30 seconds for it to really kind of lock in. You could use any color paracord that you want. I'm using black but I had considered blue. Then as you get to the end, cut it and glue it in place. And of course, when you cut any kind of paracord, you gotta heat the end, melt it so it doesn't fray. Now that that's all wrapped and glued in place, I'm just gonna slide this guard down. Probably gonna do this end first. It's gonna be a combination. So I'm going to take some of the rapid fuse and put it on the dry end that's been sanded down. Then I'm going to put some rapid fuse on here. I'll just use, say the term glue. Then I'm going to take the ball, get this guy going and screw it all in place. This is a little more sophisticated than the other end couple three things going on at the same time. Now the screw itself probably would hold this all in place, but I'm just going to get it so that it's locked in. And I want to make sure it's straight. Okay, I had a slight bit of a setback. I was having problems with the guard because what was happening, it was the guard was screwing into the circle like that at the end. It was not allowing me to get it any further down into the handle. So what I did is I just drilled the hole out. So there's a lot of play in there. And now I'm going to reattack, put down a little bit more glue. This is precisely why you want to have a glue that has a little bit of time to it because you just never know what you might be up to. If I had regular super glue, I would have probably botched up the ending there. At that point, you just got to rip it all out and it's less than desirable. If you get this guy on here like this, slide it back on, get him lined up, a little more glue on the end here. I don't, yeah, well, it's tacky actually. I'm just going to go with what I got. Just a little minor adjustment if needed. And then just lock it in place. And that guy's not going anywhere. But I really think it's a nice finish on the end. So the next thing you're going to do, and then you're pretty much done, is glue this end down here. So you follow the same procedures little rapid fuse on both sides here on the wood. I think if you would have done this first, that might have made that a little more difficult. Adjusting it ever so slightly. Just hold it down for about 30 seconds. There you go. Finished sword has a real good feel to it. And from a distance, I think it looks pretty authentic. This was a lot of fun. I've always wanted to build a sword and now I have my first one. And once you do one of these, 
you come up with all sorts of different ideas on what you want to do for your next project. So thumbs up and comments always appreciated. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in props, weapons, builds, cosplay, making and breaking things, home repairs, check out my channel and please subscribe because you never know what you're gonna see.